On February 13, 1997, a container filled with 4.8 million Lego pieces falls into the sea. The cargo ship Tokyo Express, en route to New York City from Rotterdam, is struck by a 28-foot wave 20 miles off the coast of Cornwall, England. The ship tips and loses 62 containers. One is filled with Lego pieces. Ironically, many of the plastic pieces were ocean-themed, including scuba gear, pirate swords, and whales. It becomes known as the Great Lego Spill and is the worst toy-related environmental disaster in history. Other items swept into the sea include disposable lighter, superglue, and other hazardous chemicals. Locals, tourists, and Lego fanatics have been finding pieces on Cornish beaches ever since. Collectors especially prize rare pieces like octopuses and green dragons. The Great Lego Spill has inspired social media pages and even a book. Interestingly, the incident has helped scientists gain insight into what happens to plastic in the ocean, including how far it drifts and how it breaks down. They estimate it will take 1,300 years for these pieces to fully degrade. I'm joined by Ruby here for a little commentary uh, about Lego. So Lego actually began uh, on, in a town on the Jutland Peninsula of Denmark, which some of my ancestors are from that area, just saying. But anyway, uh, anyway, this began with wooden toys back in 1932. The name Lego is actually a contraction of two Danish words that mean play well. After a fire, the company began focusing on plastic toys and uh, they began manufacturing their famous bricks back in oh. 1947. I know, Zoe, you're feeling left out. Here, I'll put Ruby down. There you go. Okay. Um, so I loved Legos as a kid. I mean, I loved them. And uh, the pirate sets were some of my favorites, which is kind of cool that that was part of what was in uh, the, the great Lego spill of 1997. But uh, my very first major set was the Yellow Castle. I don't know if you remember this. It's back in the early 80s. That was a classic. A couple of years later, I got another really cool castle set, but it was a gray castle this time, which maybe looked a little more realistic. So I, I did like that. Um, oh, do you remember the Lego Happy Meals? I remember thinking it's that the ones that had the eye on the side of them, it was like a helicopter with an eye on the side, was actually kind of creepy. Um, I know that that was maybe meant for littler kids, but I just found it disturbing. Um, ultimately, when it comes to Legos, I actually had more fun just making my own creations rather than than following the, the instructions and the sets um, as, as they were prescribed. It was just a little more fun to make things like spaceships and forts out of the, the random pieces. But to be honest, some of the reason for that is probably because, you know, I had either lost the instructions or misplaced enough of the pieces or so many pieces from different sets had gotten all mixed up together to where it was basically impossible to do the uh, the set designs. But anyway, uh, my son, who was born in 2000, was obsessed with Lego Star Wars sets. And I'll tell you, kids in Legos, um, I got a different perspective on all of that as a parent. Uh, there's really no experience in life that is quite like stepping on a Lego brick on your kid's bedroom floor. It really is life altering um, and it changes you, it really does. But anyway, uh, if, you've liked what, if you liked what you saw here today, um, of course you, sh you can always like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that, that helps the channel. You can also watch another great Mr. Lewis video here or another one right over here.